So, Jose Mourinho. After that Liverpool game, I'm not going to talk about the Liverpool game itself. I've already had my say in my post-match reaction, so go and watch that. But there is something I want to talk about after that complete humiliation by Liverpool at Anfield. Now, Roy Keane and Gary Neville were both on Sky Sports after the full-time whistle, and there was a long debate on there about Jose Mourinho, about Manchester United, the state of the club and everything in between. And both of them raised a lot of good points. So what I want to do is run through what Gary and Roy both had to say on Sky Sports, analyse their points and give my own opinion on what they had to say. But let's get straight to it. The first point that Gary was asked about was Man United as a whole and the situation under Jose Mourinho. Do you think that change is inevitable? Yeah, I think it'll happen. Um... Whether it happens during the season, I think that my preference always would be to try and get to the end of a season. I think, to be honest with you, the boardroom is so naive, it's unbelievable. But on the, on the manager... It, Can you let me finish? It's so naive. To give him an extended contract, knowing the cycle of Mourinho with three, year, three years, the third year is always the difficult year for him. So, 18 months in, he's second in the league, he's won two trophies in his first season, the players are happy with him. At that point is the point to hold your nerve and keep him hungry in that third season. Now Gary is absolutely spot on here when he's saying that change is inevitable because it is. Mourinho will not be in charge of Manchester United next season but there is something that I disagree massively on with Gary and that is the fact that he's saying that he would prefer to wait until the end of the season. Now this is something that Manchester United have done with David Moyes. We waited until we couldn't make it into the top four before we sacked him. Even though months before it was abundantly obvious that he wasn't cut out for that Manchester United job. And with Louis van Gaal, we waited until he won the FA Cup before sacking him unceremoniously. Again, we could have sacked him after December when we went through that whole month, I think, without winning. Maybe lost to Norwich. Who cares? I can't remember. It was a terrible time. We knew at that point that it wasn't really going to work under Louis van Gaal, but we waited until the end of the season. Why should Manchester United wait now to sack Jose Mourinho? when for me that would be repeating the mistakes that we made under Moyes and Van Howe by not getting rid of them sooner. For me, it, it's now past the point of no return with Mourinho. I don't think he's the man to take this club forward and I think that is now abundantly obvious to more fans than ever after that Liverpool game. So I don't agree with Gary. I don't see why waiting until the end of the season serves to help United in any way, shape or form. As for Neville's point about Manchester United's board being naive, I would probably go a step further to say they were downright stupid to give Jose Mourinho that new contract in January 2018. You've either got to back a manager or sack a manager, one of the two. And by giving him the new contract, Manchester United backed Jose Mourinho in January 2018 to be their manager for the next three years, only to then six months later do a U-turn and not back his transfer targets in the summer. That disconnect meant that this season was inevitable. And it shows the complete lack of a cohesive plan at Manchester United, from the board the whole way down through to the pitch. If Mourinho was backed in January, you back him in the summer. Or you sack him. Don't give him a new contract. But instead, United have done one half of one plan and one half of another. And it's created chaos, which will come as a surprise to nobody but it just sums up how poorly run United are as a club at the moment. Now Mourinho was given all the cards and all the power with that new contract and that's something that Neville touches on in a bit more detail. But but given what's happened since the start of the season, is there any benefit from keeping him there? Well, the problem they'll have now is that it'll cost an absolute fortune to lose him. When you lose a manager during the season, you've always then got the situation of who comes in. Are they going to get the manager that they want for the next three, four years at the football club? It's not just as easy as saying, well, let's get rid of the manager. Because Manchester United need, a, need, need to reset. And it's not just the manager. It's deeper than that. I said that before the game today. That there is an incredible level of naivety. And they lost control of the football club when they gave him a new contract 18 months in. They should never have done that. It was obvious what was happening. Because United gave Mourinho that new contract, it will be expensive to get rid of him. But money and the cost it will be to get rid of Mourinho should not be the reason why we wait a few more months. That would be a footballing decision made with a business brain. If the only reason you're keeping him is because it will be a little bit cheaper to sack him later on. That's fucking madness. Footballing decisions had to be made at this football club. And right now, Mourinho is the wrong football manager in charge. So therefore, he should be sacked. But the reason I suppose you can't sack him there is because maybe the, the, the club doesn't have that plan in place. If the club can't plan for this season, they certainly wouldn't have planned for life after Mourinho. 
So maybe the club has no idea what to do. But keeping Mourinho just to make it cheaper to sack him in a few months is madness. But the club does need to reset completely. And my biggest fear here is the fact that if you look at United off the pitch, financially, we're still getting bigger every single year. We're the second most valuable sports brand in the world. Our share price has never been higher. And this has come in this period after Fergie where we've just not been competing in the Premier League or Champions League. So my fear is that unless the Glazers sell, and there are murmurs that the Glazers are actively trying to sell for in the region of four billion, that would be amazing if that happened. But my fear is that so long as we've got the Glazers in charge, men who are just interested in taking money out of Manchester United and making a profit, then I'm not sure the true full reset can ever happen at this club. And that does scare me. Gary and Roy then go on to discuss United's transfer activity in the summer and how that has contributed to the mess that we're seeing this season under Mourinho. But then on the other hand, we criticise whoever is the board, whoever, because they don't back him with the centre-back. What is but the leadership the when you actually make well, a decision? Absolutely, you make a decision and you back him by giving him the centre-backs he wants, but then they didn't, they pulled out on him, they withdrew. They gave him the contract, then withdrew on the signings. So what would well, be that's, 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 that's why he's frustrated. That's why he's frustrated. They, did, they didn't back him. Again, they gave him the contract. Whatever players he identified, <laughs> I know they brought some players in. Not good enough, but clearly in all his press interviews, he keeps talking about we're short, we need some more players, and that is defenders. I think that's where his frustration goes back to pre-season. I know there's other stuff going on in the background with the Pogba, etc. But I think that's where he was really fed up with not getting the support in the back and he probably felt but they have to, his CV to um, For me, this season was finished before the season even began because Manchester United's board undermined their manager in public and at that point it became obvious to all of us as fans that Mourinho was not the true football manager at Manchester United. He wasn't in control of the decisions at all. It was the board above him. What, would, what must the players think in that regard as well? They can see their manager being undermined why should I then listen to him? I reckon that's probably happened behind the scenes. But because of that, because of Mourinho being undermined, none of this season is too much of a surprise. It's painful as fuck to watch, but it's not a surprise because a lot of us saw it coming. But in saying that, it's not an entire excuse for what we're seeing under Mourinho. And Keane goes on to discuss that in a little bit more detail. Boy, back to one of Jamie's original points that he doesn't feel that this manager is getting the most out of this group of players. What's your take on well, that? Looking at the results, yeah, it's, it's hard to disagree with that. Of course. But I just think there's, I think there's more to it than that. I really do. I think that the easiest thing is to say, look at the manager, and, and, and because I've done a little bit of it, the, the, the manager seems to want to suffer, get, get him out the door. His CV warrants, but it'll be another year, it certainly won't do anything, in, I think, during the course of the season. I think any Tom, Dick and Harry will agree and say, look, Mourinho's not getting the most out of his squad. You look at half-time, 1-0 against Liverpool, hardest game of the season. A midfielder is on the bench, he's going to come on. It's Mario and Fellaini, not Paul Pogba. The World Cup winner who sat on the bench for the last three games of Manchester United. More for a personal vendetta than anything else. Because Mourinho doesn't get on with him, Pogba's out of the team. So anybody who came in would certainly get more out of Paul Pogba. You look at the treatment that Martial has had since Mourinho arrived. Obviously, he's in a purple patch of form right now. But overall, somebody else could have got more out of Tony Martial as well. And you could say that about a lot of players in this squad. So while Mourinho wasn't backed in the summer, and that certainly didn't help, Mourinho's been just as much an architect of his own downfall this season as United were in the summer. As for Keane suggesting that Jose Mourinho's CV and his history as a manager means he warrants another season, that's bogus. That's, it. That's in the past. You sound like Jose Mourinho there, Roy, when you're talking about the past. Mourinho, right now, is not the right manager for United. And there's no point waiting and no point giving him another year, especially when you haven't backed him last summer. It's clear that United, as a club, don't completely trust and agree with Mourinho. And once you've reached that point, you've got to cut him loose. And that is the situation that United find themselves in. Because Mourinho has lost the support of so many fans at United. Last year, when we got knocked out of the Champions League by Sevilla, and for me, the Liverpool game, that's when I really, I sort of washed my hands of Mourinho. I said, no, it's, it's, it's gone too far now. And Neville went on to discuss that in a little bit more detail in terms of how the fans are feeling about United at the moment. Now United fans, they don't want to go to the game. They're not looking forward to the match. And, but that's not just now. 
That was under David Moyes and it was the manager's fault. That was under Louis van Gaal and it was the manager's fault. That's now under Jose Mourinho, it's the manager's fault. There's three managers who have all got good records, good managers, one of them the best of the last 20 years, along with Pep Guardiola. And that's why you have to say at this moment in time, something's broken. You can change the manager. And Manchester United, I'm sure, will change the manager at the end of the season at the latest. I'm pretty certain that. We're all pretty certain of that. Jose Mourinho, to be fair, before that Newcastle game a few weeks ago, looked beaten. He looked like he'd had enough. And I take your point about you can't always get what you want as a manager. But on the other hand, if you're giving a manager a new contract, it was obvious Manchester United needed new centre-backs. And when you say that you publicly want new centre-backs and then you don't get them, how does it make those centre-backs that are still playing out there feel? Until United resolve their structure of problems, I think we're stuck in this cycle of getting a manager in, a little bit of hope, maybe a trophy here or there. But ultimately, a year or two into it, it's going to start unfolding. The cracks are going to start appearing. And then a little bit further down the line, that manager is going to get sacked. It happened quickly with Moyes. It's taken three years with Mourinho. But until we've resolved our structure problems at the club, this is a cycle that we are going to continue to repeat. I also think Neville's got a fair point here in terms of how must the centre-backs at Manchester United have felt going into the season when Mourinho has made it abundantly obvious that he doesn't think any of them are good enough and that he wants a new centre-back. He doesn't get a new centre-back and then he plays the centre-backs that he doesn't trust in. That's a fair point. But on the other hand, they've been largely shit. They really, really have. Individual mistakes have cost United on so many occasions this season. I suppose the question to ask there, is that down to their quality all down to the fact that they don't have any confidence because the manager has taken it away from them. I think it's a little bit of both. But United certainly needed a new centre-back this summer. Everybody saw that. But all of United's problems this season would not have been resolved had we signed that one centre-back. And when he was questioned about that by Jamie Carragher, I absolutely agree 100% with everything Gary had to say. So, hang on, what are we saying is the situation Man United is in now because he hasn't been backed for one centre-back? No, it's, it's a multitude of things. It's more complex than it is the manager getting the best out of the players. Is it because he's not been backed? It's a deep problem. He's resetting. The whole club needs resetting. Seven years ago, two huge figures left that football club that had great knowledge of, of the game that left. And what happened was there were people over the financial and commercial side of the club who were brilliant at the job. There's no doubt they've revolutionised that side of the game. Commercially, Liverpool are now following Manchester United. Other clubs are now following that model. But they were then put in charge of the football side of things and they're not competent enough to do it. They've got to now hand it over to people who are good enough to run the football side of the club. Now later on in the interview Roy Keane touches upon something that I really 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 feel needs to be discussed in more detail. The only other concern I would have about Marino is what we're seeing him on a match day. I'd love to know what the atmosphere is like at the training ground. I'd like to know is, is it a happy camp because when we've seen the players body language I don't get the impression they enjoy playing for Man United. I get that impression with some of them. Yeah, they're under pressure. Everyone's under pressure, but they don't look. Some of them look disinterested. Is that coming from the manager? I can't just blame the manager up because, I, I, again, like I said at the start of the program, your own pride at some stage must kick in. So when you cross that line for Man United, you give everything you've got. But I go back to it. I think a lot of the players for Man United, midfielders as well, are not good enough for Man United. Mourinho is absolutely a problem at Manchester United, but so are so many of those players playing. For United right now. So many of them are not good enough, first of all, to play for Manchester United and so many of them have got the wrong sort of attitude for Manchester United to help take us forward. Could you imagine what Roy Keane would do if he was in that dressing room right now? He would tear it to fucking shreds. His mentality doesn't really exist in this dressing room because they're not a bunch of winners. They won't win at all costs. They're not Mourinho's type of players, I suppose, because that's what Mourinho does. He is a winner at all cost manager. It's only that Jamie Carragher touches on later. But I've, I know that Mourinho is a major problem at this club. But there's no way that these players can get away scot free. That we can say the players contributing zero to the problem at United. It's all about Mourinho. It's not. The players absolutely have to take responsibility about that as well. And a lot of them aren't good enough to play for United. How is Darmian still starting? How is Smalling just got a new contract? How is Young still starting? How is Rojo still starting? These players would have got sacked off at any other club. Look at what Guardiola did with Man City. Just got rid of any player that he didn't want to have. And that absolutely has to happen. When the next manager comes in, United have got to trim the fat in this squad. Because unless we do that, we're going to be stuck in the same cycle on the pitch. We're going to be stuck in the same cycle off the pitch. We're just going to be stuck. 
Now, later on in the interview, a really interesting question was posed to both Roy Keane and Gary Neville about what they felt a new manager would do if they did come into Manchester United to replace Jose Mourinho. And here's what they had to say. But if there was a change, Roy, what do you think a new man would go in there and do? How could he affect change right here, right now? Oh, good question. I think he'd try and get some players maybe more back on side, where Pogba, even though, again, I go back to it, he's, he's got it sort himself out. I honestly think if a manager went in there, if a Pochettino went into Man United next summer, he would say we need some players to get Man United back to where we're, to compete at the top level. I think Keane is absolutely spot on here. I think he, you know, any manager who came in would get more out of Paul Pogba, would get more out of Anthony Martial and any other players that we feel aren't Fred, certainly. And maybe players like Lingard, players who have actually improved, Lingard and Smalling, probably not Smalling actually, let me take that back, Lingard, who have improved under Mourinho, they may struggle a little bit. But overall, you would imagine that any manager who came in would improve the feeling around the squad, the feeling of the players, and improve their performances, absolutely. And Keane is absolutely spot on as well when he's saying that if Pochettino did come in, Pochettino would want new players. Can you imagine Fellaini, Matic, Darmian, these slow, laborious players playing under the intense style of Pochettino? Absolutely not. And that's part of the issue at United is we've got a squad comprised of Moyes players, Fergie players, Van Gaal players and Mourinho players. Four completely different types of managers with four completely different styles. All trying to play one cohesive style under Mourinho. Alas, it doesn't work. And if Pochettino or anybody does come in, expect there to be widespread changes in this squad once again. And a final point I want to put into this video is actually from Jamie Carragher when he's talking about what United expected when they appointed Jose Mourinho. The, the reason you bring Mourinho in, it's not to bring youth players through. It's not to carry on the traditions of Manchester United playing free-flowing football. Forget that. Man United, after two probably mistakes in, in managers that they brought in, it's win at all costs. Forget the football, forget the youth, forget playing with wingers. We just want to win. That's what you bring Mourinho for. Carragher is absolutely spot on. Mourinho is a win-at-all-costs manager. He's not a bring-through-the-youth manager. He's not a manager that's going to grace you with the style that you want to see. He's a manager that is going to win at all costs. And United backed that philosophy. That's why we got Mourinho after Van Gaal and Moyes, because we needed a winner to come and change the mentality of the club around. And for the first two years, we saw progress. We saw Mourinho winning the Europa League. We saw Mourinho winning the League Cup, finishing second behind an anomaly City team. You could see the progress. You could see things working. But then United did a U-turn. In that third summer, United's board decided, you know what, we don't completely back Mourinho. We're not going to get you Alderweireld or Maguire. We don't want you to buy 29, 30 year old established players. We want you to get younger players in, somebody who's going to have a better resale value and maybe bring through the youth a bit more. You can't have your cake and eat it. United, at that point, didn't back Mourinho 100%. And that's when the wheels fell off. So Carragher is absolutely right. When you get into the bed with the devil, and that's what Mourinho is as a manager, you have to let him do what he wants to do. And when United turned their back on him this summer, the fallout we're seeing now is nothing but inevitable. I think in this video here, Gary Neville, Roy Keane, Jamie Carragher, I think they all raise plenty of fair points. Some wrong, some right. But what do you think about Jose Mourinho now? Do you think he should be sacked immediately as United manager? Or do you think he should stay until the end of the season and then United can move on? I want to know exactly what you think in the comments below, as always. If you're new to United People's TV, come on, drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Get some sort of positive out of it, I suppose. Until next time, take it easy.